Okay, so I'm on my break. It's 15 minute break. Um, <laughs> dude, uh, can you imagine like hearing the same sound for literally 40 hours uh, a week? Uh, just it, and it's horrible because I, you know, I'm sensitive to sound in general. So, but you know what? I mean. I have a job where the people that I work with are really nice, and um, we actually have a theater room. Um, but I'm grateful. But at the same time, I'm like, I can't, uh, I can't do this for the rest of my life. I just can't. So I just want to do what I'm passionate about. I am motivated more than ever because look, that that phone listening to it like all day long and um it you know it stressed me out today and I was thinking like oh man I want to give me some soda and chips but I'm like oh hell freaking no because I'm trying to change my life and so the first thing I can do to change my life is I need to like take care of my vessel make sure I'm absolutely in tune so this fast is kind of a spiritual fast too because it's not it's not like a weight loss plan it's more of like a spiritual um fast because it's like i need direction you know and it's like i know heavenly father wants me to succeed in life and he wants me to be happy wherever i'm at like i want to be exceptionally happy like i want to know i want to feel what it is to be exceptionally happy again you know i mean there i remember there was a time when i actually woke up and I look forward to the day and I was like so freaking excited you know and it's like I can be there again you know I just have to uh, I, I I know that me being stuck at an office all day is not gonna help any like I, I need to make a change in my life I need to do you know what I'm passionate about and I am passionate about my music like a lot of the videos I've been making recently are kind of goofy but um, I want to start singing. I can sing pretty good, and I am a singer. I am a songwriter. Uh, I wouldn't, you know, don't take the the videos that I just made of the songs that I've done below. Don't take that seriously because that's just like me goofing off. But um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be on my path. Okay, what? Well, I got like I got ten minutes. Um. Yeah, I could have had me a soda and chips, but I'm like, oh, hell freaking no. Like, I just can't. I can't. I cannot. Because I feel like, you know, me doing a smoothie fast and, you know, like connecting, you know, to my purpose again. And just clearing out all the confusion and the cobwebs and just, you know, gaining that inner confidence that I can actually freaking do something that I absolutely love. It's about time. I'm 36 years old. You know, I... Not everybody gets to do that. Everybody can do that, actually. No, everybody can do that, but I think that a lot of people are afraid to actually live, you know, how they really, truly, you know, want to. Not even want to, but just like, you know, what is there to live, that, you know, what they came here to do. Just imagine, like, if every single person um, did what they were passionate about versus, like, settling because I, I bet you for anything, there's somebody passionate about answering phones. There, there might be somebody that is genuinely happy answering the phones and it like lists their whole day to be able to, t to speak with somebody on the telephone. And it may be the perfect job for them. Um, you know, there's other people that would be absolutely passionate. I know this sounds funny, but passionate about doing the dishes, you know. It's like, you know, I actually had a, a job where I did dishes. Um, I don't think that, you know... Nobody should look down on any other job, but I think that every job should be um, doable to, you know, where you can actually pay your bills. I feel like every person should be treated really well wherever they're working, and they need to get the hookup. Holla if you hear me. Seriously. I'm not saying that we need to uh, raise the minimum wage, but it just needs to be, like, you know, they just need to genuinely care for their employees because if they do that, then it's going to make their job a lot more effective you know and um so i think you know there's something called spiritual economics where it's like you're you know working is like is is 
about spirituality. It's about spiritual growth. You know, and so then if you're at a place that you don't feel like it's really challenging you in that area or helping you become better, sometimes it's just better to move on, you know. Um, but I don't know. We can't judge. We just, we seriously can't judge people. And, you know, homeless people too. Like, you can never judge a homeless person, you know. Because, I mean, that, I think there's so much honor in that. I do. Um you know, there's other people that have jobs where they rip people off, you know, and they throw people out of their home. Like literally they work for like mortgage companies and then they, you know, go to people's house and then they, you know, try to tell people to get out of their own home. Okay. So that's, there's no honor in that, but I feel like there is honor, you know, with people that may not have a job. Um, and they just, you, cause you really don't know their story. You don't know where they're coming from, you know? Um, and I, I don't know, I think that they make the world a better place, to tell you the truth. Uh, especially, like, if they're, like, a musician, and they're, like, you know, playing on the street, and um, just sharing their light, and it just encouraging and inspiring people. I think that's absolutely, that's just beautiful, you know? So, I just, it makes me, uh, you know, sad when people uh, look down at people that do that, um, and they, you know, I think that we all should contribute, though, you know? to society because we want to. And I think that probably mo probably most of the homeless people they probably do want to contribute, you know? So like I say you really you truly don't know their story. You don't know where they're coming from. Okay, so I went on a tangent about that, but I'm passionate about my music. And that's all I want to do. That's all I freaking want to do. That's it. Like I just want to you know create and that's it. That's that is like in my spirit. I'm just like my spirit's crying out. It's like I want to just do that. That's it. Like, I don't want to answer phones anymore. I don't want to, I don't want to build anybody else's dream. I want to build my own dream. And, you know, I mentioned before, I'm not a very sociable person. Um, and I think that that's okay. Like, it's a protection for me, you know, to not socialize, but I like to connect with people. And what better way to connect with people by making a song? And being able to literally have that much of an impact on somebody's life where you make a song so well or it doesn't even have to like even sound good. It's just like if I put my heart into something and they receive it and it just like, you know, really um, helps them in their life. I mean, there's nothing better. There's nothing better to be able to create something that could do that for somebody. You know what I mean? And so I, I think that is a beautiful gift. It's a beautiful gift for me so that I can put my heart into something you know, and put my soul into it and just be able to appreciate how it turns out. Like I, that, I mean, that is kind of my personality. Like any and everything I do, I pretty much put my, my everything into, um, which sometimes I need to chill out in other areas. You know, I shouldn't be like, so like <laughs> extreme, but I, you know, I feel like there's nothing wrong with being extreme, like in music, you know, and, um, and, and just trying to do the very best I can. Like, I mean, I am kind of a perfectionist. And, you know, if I put something together, I want it to be absolutely just like a masterpiece in, in what I can do, you know. So, I don't know. I just, but I think, I think I have a lot of hope in my heart. I really do. Because I think that the, I think that things are getting better for America. I really do. Like, I feel it in my spirit. I very, I do. And I know that a lot of people, you know, they speak about doom and gloom, you know, especially like people into like religion. They're like, oh no, like this is the last days. I'm like, do you understand? There's so many good people out there. And I think that people are reading the Bible wrong because look, I'm going to tell you all this. If you read in the Bible, there's the part where, um, jo it wasn't Job, it was Jonah, Jonah in the well. And he went to go preach to the people of Nineveh and he told them to repent. And, um, you know, he did not want to do it. He was just like, you know, he went the other way and then he ended up getting put in a well for like however many days. He was just gritting his teeth the whole time. He's like, oh, I got to preach to these people and tell them to repent. Like, no way. Like, he did not want to speak to those people at all. But then what happened was, so he's there and he's, you know, telling them like, if you don't repent, you're going to be destroyed. And it's like, probably maybe there was like one part of them that kind of wanted them to be destroyed. I know that sounds horrible, but there probably was. I mean, that's part of human nature. It's like, you don't, well, I wouldn't say if you don't like someone, you want them to be destroyed, but you just don't want, 
I don't know. I kind of try to want the best for people, but, you know, I don't know. So, either way. So, he goes there, and he's like, yeah. You know, and he's probably, he was grinning his teeth the whole way. But, either way, let me tell you the point of the story. They repented. And guess what? God did not destroy them. He did not destroy them. So, Joe, Jonah got really upset with that because he was like, oh, my gosh, it looked like I lied. Well, that's the way I look at religion and the doom and gloom thing. Where it's like, you know, in the Bible, it talks about... Uh, revelation and it talks about all these horrific things those are just warnings though they're not meant to officially happen you know God did not send Jonah to you know Nineveh because he wanted them to be destroyed he wanted them to repent so he spoke to them very boldly and he used very you know colorful language or whatever like that to get their attention you know it's the same thing like if you have a child you know and if they're running across the street you're gonna like be more dramatic you're gonna say if you run across the street you're gonna die like it's gonna be you're not gonna say oh don't run across the street now you're not gonna talk to that you're not going to talk to your child like that if they're because then the things that, that will happen is you know they're gonna die so that wouldn't be good so it's the same thing so anyway um my time is up i gotta go back to work um but i'm gonna tell y'all i do think that wonderful things are happening for america because i think that there's so many good people and there's people that are awake they want change and so the lord is amazing because he wants that he's merciful he wants us to have you know before his second coming he wants it to be good like he truly does you know it's like we have the free agency to be able to choose you know how we want things to play out before the yeah you know, before the return of the savior and i'm optimistic like i want things to be good like you know, if, if things do get bad, I, I still can feel close to the Savior and feel, you know, absolute joy and happiness, like, no matter what's happening. But at the same time, I feel like there's just so many good things that we can do. Like, we can change society. So, anyway, I need to go back. Ugh. I hope you have a wonderful day.